BB Steel there with Don't You Love Me or Leave Me. And uh, Craig, clearly the sound was very international. Did the band ever tour outside of Australia? I, I can recall the national support, and I know I saw you with Leopard in Sydney in 92. Did the band tour outside of Australia? Uh, with BB Steel? Yeah. N- no, we went to, we did live in America, um, and we set up in a big sound studio and did some special shows for record companies, like showcases. Um, that's about all we really did. And uh, it was a shame because the band was sounding, sounding really good. But the problem was um, Kurt Cobain came on the scene at about yeah. that point. And yeah. it, the tide for rock, metal, hair metal, whatever it was, started to really, really turn, especially in Australia. Sure. Australia started, not so much the rest of Northern Europe and Europe, you know, they love their rock, but in Australia, uh, when we came back and returned, we uh, come back to, um, yeah, uh, bands like Silverchair. And we were like, sure. what, what? You know, there's this guy that looks like Kurt Cobain, he's wearing the same T-shirt, and he they're being played nonstop on the radio, and we can't get our song. I think uh, we had a song called Big Love. We were releasing around that time. And the video was great for Big Love. But um, I remember Richard Wilkins, who used to be my old manager as a kid with Boss. And he he was running MTV. And he rang us up as a mate and said, mate, you you got to release something that's a bit darker because Big Love's happy. And um, we're going more of that Seattle sound. And well, that stuffed us because I wasn't going to wear baggy pants, wear my cap or back, a, or and a jump flannel up and down. Uh, and you know what? Uh, well, a lot, the, the Seattle thing destroyed a lot of rock bands, and it took years for a lot of bands. They all, a lot of them hung hung in there, but yeah. um, you, you know, a lot of bands died off because of it. A lot of bands did. The bands that hung in were the bands that were like already had massive success. Sure. Bon Jovi, Def Leppard, ACDC. Uh, sure. There was you know Tesla were kind of like still pulling two thousand. At gigs, uh, some of those acts, Metallica, uh, you, you had to have a, there was a transition. Some bands were, They'd already made some bands transitioned, like, say bands like uh, when we came back, uh, we were in Sydney, uh, Powderfinger. Now, Powderfinger were going to have our support act at um, at Springfields, right? That was a really cool gig in Sydney. And our guitar player's father ended up passing away that week, and we ended up not doing that gig. But Powderfinger were one of those bands that were transitioning. They were they were into what we were doing, and then all of a sudden they were kind of also um, were in that indie thing as well. They were doing the uni gigs, and it's something that we should have done. And uh, so Powderfinger were one of those bands that transitioned in Australia and went on to be huge.